We said in the previous video that we could estimate the equilibrium distribution for a Markov chain by simply running that Markov chain, by simulating the behavior and looking at what values we observe. Now, we also said that that only worked under certain conditions or certain situations. Now, whenever somebody says something like that to you, the very obvious question being, well, which conditions? What has to hold? If it doesn't hold, why not? Well, one thing that could go wrong is that the chain simply hasn't reached equilibrium. The definition of an equilibrium distribution is what happens eventually as the number of moves gets bigger and bigger and bigger. But maybe I haven't reached the equilibrium. Maybe I'm still in some state that hasn't got away from the initial conditions into the equilibrium. So let's consider this admittedly slightly contrived example. So here's a Markov chain with four states, A, B, C, and D. But something odd's happening. If it's in state A, it's got a 50% chance of moving to B in the next move. And it's got a one in 10 to the 10, so probability 10 to the minus 10, that's one in 10 billion. So it's got a one in 10 billion chance of moving to C. And so, well, very close to 50% chance of staying in A. So if it's got 50% chance of going to B, one in 10 billion chance of going to C, then it's got 50% well, minus one 10 billionth chance of staying in A. And similarly for B. So what it's going to do here is it's going to spend a lot of time bouncing between A and B. A, B, 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 A, A, B, A, B, B, A, and so on. And then eventually, and I do mean eventually because it'll take an average of 10 billion moves before this happens, it'll flick down to B or to C or D. Once it's in C or D, it'll do the same thing down there. D, D, C, D, C, 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 D, and so on. Forevermore. So the very long run behavior is that this is going to bounce equally likely between C and D. That is the equilibrium because eventually it'll leave A and B. And when it does, it isn't coming back. But when I ran this for a few thousand moves, what I saw was I saw about 50% A, about 50% B. So if I didn't acknowledge that my simulation hadn't reached equilibrium, I would wrongly say that the equilibrium distribution was 50% A, 50% B, when in fact it should be zero chance of A, zero chance of B, 50% C, 50% D. The issue here was that it would take billions upon billions of moves to reach the equilibrium, and I just didn't wait long enough. So again, we've already said that this method works under certain conditions. When might it not? Okay, well, let's say I run the Markov chain for exactly a thousand moves starting in state A. I get an observation. I repeat that. I start in state A, run it for a thousand moves, get an observation. Repeat, repeat, repeat. If I do this on this original Markov chain that we agreed, the equilibrium distribution was all four states equally likely. But if I do that, what's the chance that under my sampling thing of running for a thousand moves, observing something, what's the chance I observe it in state B after exactly 1,000 moves? Well, it's going to be zero because the system is periodic with period two because it's in A, then one move in the future, it's in B or C. Then one move in the future, it's in A or D. Then one move in the future, it's in C or D, C or B. Then one move in the future, A or D. So it can only get back to itself in multiples of two moves. So that is periodic, period two. So if I try to do the equilibrium distribution here through simulation, 
I get this misleading belief that it's going to be 50% A, 50% D, when in fact it should be 25% for A, B, C, and D each. We will just finish this section with a few key concepts and definitions. We call a Markov chain ergodic if every state communicates with every other. If you remember communication, state A communicated with state B, if it was possible, if I was in state A, to eventually be in state B. Maybe in one move, maybe not, but eventually I could get from A to B. And so the chain's ergodic if, given you're in any state, it is possible in future to be in any other. We say that the state is periodic with period D if and only if it can't be left and returned to unless the number of moves taken is divisible by D. So if every return path to a state was two moves or four moves or six moves or eight moves, then we'd say that had period two. And just in terms of definition, I suppose every state which we can get back to has to be period multiples of one. Uh, so we call that a periodic. Having period one is not really having periodicity at all. So a periodic or not periodic. So in terms of the simulation, if we're going to get this done properly, we want the chain to be ergodic. I'm not going to get stuck anywhere that every state can be obtained in future from any other state and i also would prefer it not to be periodic where if i sample at certain intervals i'm guaranteed to either miss certain states or to over observe certain states the other thing which we'll tend to do when doing some of these techniques we'll see in a future video is to maybe run it for a while as what we call a burn-in period. So say, well, it, it doesn't move far from the initial conditions initially. So I'll start it somewhere and ignore the first thousand observations, ignore the first 10,000 observations to reduce the bias of where I started it.